All right, Joe Pavlik, offensive line coach, University of North Dakota. All right, I want to start out by talking a little bit about our philosophy. Compete in a relentless pursuit of a competitive edge. We want to do things better than they've ever been done here before. All right, and you know this little bit slide right here. You know we're never going to finesse or position block anything. We're always going to be the first ones to throw the punch. But I want to get to technique. We're going to be best at the basics. Technique, technique, technique. Scheme's important, but to me, the fundamentals and technique and coaching up your players to block whatever, that's more important, all right? <clears throat> now, as we get into this stance and start, I want to talk a little bit about this because I really believe this is important, all right? And I really believe if you were to come to North Dakota and watch our offensive line practice, I really think you would be underwhelmed at what we do because we try to teach technique and fundamentals, right? And in order to be fundamentally sound, you can only give your guys so much, all right? So much information that they realistically can absorb, all right? And I don't believe in overwhelming them with material. We're gonna get good at what we do and rep it a bunch, all right? So stance and start now, talking to me about, talking about stance and start. To me, my job as a coach is to teach them what to do and teach them how to do it. And I really believe anybody can have a good stance. Anybody can have a good stance. <clears throat> the most important thing when we talk about stance and start is have some common sense about this. I don't want my players to be robots, all right? And understand that defense knows what you're gonna do in certain situations, so your stance is gonna change based upon situation, um, all that stuff. But first, you know, we wanna start with our feet, all right? Nearly parallel with minimal stagger. Feet comfortably spread with weight inside out. Now, I'm not going to say all stances are going to feel comfortable. If you've been doing it wrong for a long time, getting in a good stance is not going to feel comfortable. It's only going to start to feel comfortable after you rep it over and over and over and over again. All right? Hips low with knees and ankles flexed thin, legs cocked and back flat, eyes up and open, down hand directly below the chin, weight on fingertips, weight equally distributed across all three points. Now understand, have some common sense approach to it, okay? Defense knows what the hell is going on, all right? If it's third and 10, they know you're going to throw the ball. If it's third and one from the goal line, they know you're going to run the ball. All right, so now under, you know, every stance is going to change based upon, you know, the situation in the game. Okay, so it's not always going to look the same, but to me, you know, you want to get in a good sense. You want to get in a good stance with shoulder width apart and be ready to move in any sort of direction. I, I tell my guys, get in a three-point stance, move to the right, move to the left, move forward, slide to the left, slide to the right. And I want them to accomplish all of that without giving away the direction in which they're going. If they can do that comfortably, all right, then it's a pretty good stance. This first drill right here now, we call it stance and start. It's a warm-up drill, all right. Here we go. But it's all it is. I do it once maybe in the spring ball and once in fall camp, all right. So right here, how we have this set up, but we have this white line and it's faded. It's hard to see, but we have this white line right there. Our players are to the left of that line. Their right foot is to the left of that line. On my set hut, they're just going to step and run. I'm not talking about a wide base. I don't talk about duck walk. All I want to see them is just run. Set the tempo, set the demeanor of this play. And again, I don't talk too much about a base. All right. All I really believe is having your feet up and underneath yourself. Having your feet up and underneath yourself, regardless of what position you play in football, I, I believe in order to be successful, you got to have your feet up and underneath yourself. And, you know, that's I, I got that from University of Iowa with Coach Ferentz and all those guys. So right here on my set hut, boom, that left knee, that left foot should be vertical on that white line, should be vertical on that white line, and we're just running off the ball. Again, all this drill really does is set the tempo, set the standard. I want them running for five yards all right now we get the other one, other guys up same thing just step and run just step and run now we go step with our left foot again that right foot should be on that white line I want that right foot on that white line I don't believe in winding up I'll get into that more in a second but that's our warm-up drill we do this again once in spring ball once in fall camp all right, and all I'm looking for is to make sure everybody's getting in a good three-point stance, eyes up and in front, see what the hell is going on, 
And again, to set the tempo, set the demeanor, and really good for the freshman coming in for the first time, understand how fast we want to play. All right, now, this, this is what I believe in, and this is our buzzwords that we use, okay? We're always going to have aiming points, all right? This is our run blocking fundamentals. We're always going to have aiming points regardless of, every, of any play that we're going to run, whether it's inside zone, slant, or any sort of gap scheme play. We're always going to have aiming points, whether it's the play side number, play side armpit, or via the net. We're going to have aiming points on every single play, a reference that our players can use. Again, just like stance and start, you know, I don't want to overwhelm any of our players with material, all right? I don't try to be trying to be smarter than I'm not, you know, I don't, I don't try to outsmart my players. So I give them two, three things that they can focus on, all right, so that they can remember and that they, they can improve every single day, all right? But eyes on our aiming point, regardless of play, that's always the, the first thing, playing with our eyes, all right? Establish leverage. All right, to me, there's two types of leverage. There's your up and down leverage. We call that pad under chin, all right? And then you have your side to side leverage, your elbows in, your knees in line, all that stuff. Up and down leverage, side to side leverage. Those are your two types of leverage. Every single play, that's what I'm looking for. If, you're, if your pad's under the uh, defender's chin, your elbows in tight, all that stuff. And in the run game, you know, I'll talk more about the pass game here later, but in the run game, we want to eliminate separation. We want to get on somebody and stay on somebody. How fast can we eliminate the separation, close the gap, and get on a block and stay on a block? All right, that's the most important thing to me in the run game. We want to maintain a chest-on-chest -chest relationship with the defender. Your hands, to me, again, I got this from Coach Ferentz, but your hands are very secondary in the block. Your hands are very secondary. All right, they're important, but they're not as important as your pads. And to me, I want, I want our players to think of your shoulder pad as being the fist. All right, your shoulder pad, think of that as being the fist. And I want you to fit that underneath his chin. All right, we let our pads, we let our shoulders, we let, we let those big parts do the blocking. And our hands are very secondary. They're there just to kind of guide us in. All right, <clears throat> stay square to your target. Whenever we get there, whether it's the play side number, armpit, we want to square up and get to a man block. All right, run, we're a little bit different. I, t I hit on that earlier, but we want to talk about running off the ball, not duck walking. We want our feet up and underneath ourselves, but we want to run off the ball. All right, bend your knees and keep your feet underneath yourselves. All right, and then bring your backside knee through the defender's crotch, run through the block and never lean on the defender. And I talk more about bringing my knees than I do bringing my feet. And again, that's another thing I got from Coach Ferentz at Iowa was that they always talk about bringing your knees. And I really think that's like a bigger, powerful connotation to a player than just saying bring your feet, All right? When, they, when you talk about bringing your knees, I think that represents more of a powerful meaning and I like that. So I talk a lot about bringing our knees. Finish, you always dictate when the block ends. Play through the whistle. That's just a style of play, how we're gonna finish. You know, to us, it's like, you know, try to punch me when I'm on top of you, punching in your face. That's what the mindset I wanna create here at North Dakota, all right? Try to, try to attack me. Try to attack me when I'm on top of you, punching in your face, all right? I want us to attack and we finish on our terms, all right? How you get there, first two steps, I'll talk more about this, but all your first step, I really believe, all that does is just make room for your second step, all right? All it does is make room for your second step. The first step should be quick, natural, and efficient, all right? I don't overcoach that. Second step, that's the step that needs to create the movement on the defender. Backside pad, elbow knee, all in line on a string, get it in the ground quickly, and in the crotch of the defender, all right? Defender technique. It's only as good, the look's only as good as the look that you get from the defender, and I really coach these guys hard. Whether we're holding the bag, all right, or we're in pads and we're in a four-point stance, we want to get low as possible. But I don't believe in any sled shoots, no gimmicks. You only got so much time in individual, whether it's 40, 30 minutes in practice, you ought to make that 40, 30 minutes the hardest part of practice. Make it as hard as possible, and I don't want to waste my time on a lev sled, any of that stuff. I want a human body so they get to understand what it feels like to fit their pads on a human body. All right, drive. This is the first drill that we do every single day. Drive. So now, 
right here. Not a good look on defense. I'll first start by saying that we need to get better, and we did get better. All right, but bag holders holding that bag in tight. Offensive lineman's right here. He's in a right-handed stance. His right foot slightly back. On my set hut, he's looking the middle of that bag. Looking in the middle of that bag. All right. Is this the most realistic block? Probably not. The defender is nose to nose with the offensive lineman. He's playing down the middle. All right. Donnie Ventrelli is looking in the middle of the numbers, middle of the bag. But on contact, he wants to fit his right pad. All right. His elbow and knee should be all in line. And that pad should be directly under the defender's chin. All right. Again, your hands are very secondary. I want them inside and underneath the bag. And I want your pad doing the work. I don't like the wind up right there. We're not very good right now when we're in pads or when we're not in pads. We got to get better. But again, I believe it's all through repetition, okay? Same thing right there. You know, I don't like the wind up. I think he's kind of reaching and grabbing a little bit with his hands. You can see that right there. I don't like that, all right? Because I really feel when you start to reach and grab for something, your feet stop and then you lean on a block. And now we don't get anything accomplished. You want to bring your knees up and underneath yourself and your hands are there just to guide you. But more importantly, you want to fit your pad on contact. All right. Now let's get to some of the clips where we're in pads. But you can see we do this drill a bunch. I'm a big rep guy. I really believe in rep and I got that from, you know, Tim Polisek. To me, he always taught me the more reps you get in practice, the better it is for everybody. If guys are just standing around watching, they're not getting better. So that's why I make my practices. All right. It's, it's very intense. Everybody's getting reps. Right here, I got two guys up. Offense, offense. Here's the defense right there. All right, as soon as they're done, as soon as their reps over, I get a new four up, and we start this whole process over again. But everybody's getting a ton of reps in this period. Whether it's a five-minute period, we're getting as many reps as we can. Not bad right here. Set, hut, boom! Pat under chin, elbows in tight, and he's running on the block. You can see his left hand is a little wide late. He repositions it and gets it back inside and underneath. I don't really coach up that too much. I think that kind of happens naturally. And if I coach your elbows in tight, I think those players will get their elbows in tight. All right, but I really like right there on contact. And if I pause it, if I can figure out how to pause it, right here, boom, pad, elbow, knee, all in line on a string. I can see his pads under the defender's chin. Pads under the defender's chin, his elbows are in tight, and his knee, his backside knee is through the defender's crotch. He's sending all of his power, all of his energy, momentum through the defender. Defender, he's in a four-point stance, eyes up, ass down, chest up, given resistance. All right, we're in pads, so we can be in a four-point stance now. Good, and I, and you set hut, they go, all right, and then I say break, break, break. All right, usually about, you know, I try to go two lines right here. We're outside, so we don't have lines, but I try to go about 10 yards and finish. I make it tough on those guys. Here, I like how Kyle Hergel is coming off the ball, and he is attacking the defender. Pad under chin right there. Pad under chin, all right? Elbows are in tight. His left elbow could be a little bit better. I think he's trying to clamp it a little bit with that left elbow. All right, but I like how he's accelerating off the ball and he's accelerating to and through contact. Once you make contact, accelerate through contact. This is a really good illustration. Your elbows in tight pad under chin and just running on the block. I think that's a really good rep here by Donnie. Again, you can see him in a right-handed stance. He steps to it, backside knee directly through his crotch. I'm not concerned about his base. But more importantly, I like how his feet are up and underneath himself and he's not leaning on the block. He's bringing his knees and he's running, eliminating separation. To me, football is all about how fast can you get on or blocking is all about how fast can you get on somebody and stay on somebody. And I don't, I don't know too much, you know, about size and height, but I would imagine our guys are probably not the biggest in the Missouri Valley. All right. <clears throat> but what I do know Right? And I, again, I don't try to outsmart my players. The only thing in physics I know is force equals mass times acceleration. The bigger and stronger you are, and we get through that, we get, we get to that in the weight room, but the bigger and stronger you are, and the quicker and faster you can get on somebody, the more force we're going to create on a block. 
Not bad. I don't like how he flinches his head on contact. His eyes should be straight directly through the defender. All right, Donnie right here is not giving a great look on defense. Could be better, but I like how he's running. You know, I, I like that get off here by 76, how he's accelerating, how he's running, rather than this one right there. Too slow. You can see this one right here. I'm kind of blocking it, but I can see him. his first movement. He goes to lunge. He goes to wind up. And it's too slow. He starts. He leans. He leans into the block rather than brings his knees and runs. Right? He's leaning into the block right there. He's leaning into the block. You can't see his knees because I block it. But right here, Matt. Well, let's go. He's stepping into the block and he's running into it. Again, I don't do too much. I let our guys get good at with what we got. Good acceleration off the ball. Not bad. But again, over and over and over and over again. Is this the most realistic drill? Probably not. You're not going to see too many times where you get a zero nose, two technique, or a four technique that plays through the middle of you. But I believe that the, what this drill does do a good job of is teaching you what it feels like to fit up on a block. All right? Yeah, maybe quarterback sneak. You know, it was really interesting, but, you know, I could see this because we do, we do ref some quarterback sneak, and I think this is pretty good for that drill. So I, I, so I do have this in my repertoire, and I do rep it over and over again. I, I like this drill. You can see his hands are initially wide. That left elbow is wide, all right? His hands are high and up, side, uh, up top. But, again, I don't coach it. I think it just kind of happens naturally where those players, they want to get their elbows back inside and underneath the block late. Right? And your hands are very secondary. They're there just to guide you. Think of your pad. Think of your left pad right here in this picture as your, as your fist. That's what you want to fit. All right? Tight reach. Now, this is drill number two. Drive was drill number one. Tight reach is drill number two. This simulates our inside zone play. This simulates our inside zone play. Our aiming point becomes the play side number. All right? The first step, again, all it does is allow you to bring your backside knee through the defender's crotch. Bag holder alignment is crotch to foot, all right? Here are our base inside zone rules. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about them, all right? I want to keep this more to a drill tape than I do on a clinic tape. But feel free to text me, call me. I don't care. I would love to talk football sometime, but let's keep this a drill tape right now. Bag holder alignment, all right? So now, no pads. Crotch, all right? I mean, excuse me, foot to foot alignment, all right? Our aiming point is that play side number. So right here, we're working tight right. If I say tight right, they know everything. It tells them where to line up, all right? Foot to foot alignment. Tells them the aiming point on tight right is that play side two, all right? Play side number. And I wanna, again, all my first step is gonna do, all my first step is gonna do is just make room for that backside knee, for that backside knee. And on contact, I wanna fit my left pad, all right? I want to bring my left elbow in tight and bring my left knee through the defender's crotch on contact. And my eyes should be up and looking in that number. I want to play with my eyes. Get your eyes up and look in that number. All right, I don't like how he's flint turning his head on contact here. And again, I understand we're not in pads, so it's, it's always a little bit harder. But again, his hands are there just to kind of guide the block in. All right, his pad's doing the work. Get square to the block. Boom, on contact, you can see him, pad, elbow, knee. Now I'd like to see him a little bit more square, and I think he's turning his head, and that kind of hurts him. But, you know, he should be running vertical on that white line. He kind of gets off that white line. I want him vertical on that white line. But I do like his elbows are in tight. He's maintaining a chest-on-chest -chest relationship, and his knees are up and underneath himself. Not bad right here. Kind of, you know, again, fitting his left pad. Hands are there just to guide him. Boom! Bringing his left knee right now through the defender's crotch, and he's on that white line running. All right? Now, we're in pads. So defender's in a four-point stance. All right? We're probably a little bit wide here for my liking. All right? I'd like to see us a little bit more foot-to-foot -foot alignment. But again, he's number 73. So offensive lineman's eyes should be looking in that three right there. They should be looking in that three. That's my play side number. That's my aiming point on this tight right. Set hut. Again, we want to use the cadence to our advantage. I'll get into more of this when the centers are up. But on the T of the set, that's when I'm looking to go. On the T of the set. 
I don't like the defender, how he's standing up, giving him a poor look right here, making it easy. All right, I coach these guys on defense hard. But I do like on contact, boom, you can see his hands are there just to kind of guide it in. His hands are guiding in the block. And on contact, boom, pad, elbow, knee, all in line on a string. Elbows are in tight. If I look at you from this angle right there, I don't want to see your elbows. Quick and smooth. You know, it's not bad right there. I think the defender's technique is, is, is a BS right here. I don't like this. There we go. This is a young guy, a freshman, you know, and you can see, I think what we do, it enables our guys to get good at what we do faster. All right. They're not thinking about too much. I don't want to overwhelm them with material. I'm just giving them two, three points, pat under chin, elbows in tight, bring your knees and run. That's all they're constantly thinking about. And again, your aiming point too, but that's all they're thinking about. Pat under chin, Elbows in tight, bring my knees and run. I don't have a million different coaching points. I'm not talking about, you know, lifting a guy or all that stuff. Doc, well, I don't, I'm not, I'm not over coaching that as much as I want to see somebody get on a block and stay on a block. I really like what he's doing right here, right here. Now, I don't like the wind up. I don't coach the wind up. Some coaches do coach the wind up and some coaches have a lot of success. You know, the Redskins of the eighties, they, they would always wind up and they were really successful. I don't coach winding up. I don't believe in it. But, you know, I don't have any thoughts one way or the other. It's just my personal opinion. I may be full of it. But I think that right there is the wasted motion. But I do like how he's bringing that right knee, fitting his right pad underneath the defender's chin, and he's running. This is a really good rep here by a young guy. Again, I don't coach getting in your hands. You know, I don't coach that windmill, windmill stuff, right? But you can see him just, he feels like his right hand's out wide. He gets it back inside and underneath because I'm always stressing your elbows in tight. Here we go. This is Ben Christian, center. Boom. I like it. I'm fat. Centers. I got this from Coach Ferentz and James Ferentz really taught it to me too. But centers, your one advantage, all right, is the cadence, is the snap count. You you control that. You control that. So again, you want to snap the ball. If cadence is set hot. You want to snap the ball on the tee of the set. But centers, to me, the one important thing about the playing the center position is you want to think about step, then snap, step, then snap, step, then snap, not snap first, then step. You're going to be too slow on contact, but step, then snap, right? And again, right here, you know, this is Nate Nguyen. He, he was primarily a guard and tackle for us and center was new. So right here, I think this is a bad rep. I think he's snapping first and then he's stepping. Here's a little bit of a better rep. A little bit more of improvement. He's trying to think about stepping and snapping. And to me, guys, I don't overcoach the first step. All it does is just make room for that backside knee, which I think Nate's doing a good job. You know, the only time I coach the first step is when you start struggling to bring your backside knee through. Your first step should just be quick and efficient. The tighter he is, the more ground you can gain. The wider he is, I think the more ground you're going to probably have to lose. But again, have some common sense approach to it. Have some common sense approach. This is a really good rep here by Donnie. Again, you can see his hands are there just to kind of guide it in. His hands are there just to kind of guide in the block, and he's fitting his left pad on contact. It's, it's pretty good. Again, I do this over and over and over again. I do it in fall camp. I do it during the season, and I do it in playoffs. Now, you can see right here we're inside, so we're in the playoffs, all right? But we're doing the same drills over and over and over again. All right, and I really like, if you look at Donnie again over here on the far side, but on contact, you can really see him. Man, he's striking. Boom! Pad, elbow, knee. And you can see right there, that defender, he's kind of shocked. Lifted a little bit. He's jolted off his stance. Boom! He accelerates through contact. Accelerate through contact. It's a really good rep by him. 
right? Now, whatever you do in practice, it ought to show up on the film because if it doesn't, then you're wasting your time. So if you look at our right guard in this picture, we're running inside zone to the right, but all this block to him is tight right. He's looking in that play side number. He wants to fit his left pad, bring his left knee, and tuck that left elbow in tight. It's a good rep here by him. Again, what you do in practice, it ought to show up on film. All right? Now, right here, if you look at our center right here, it's just tight left. He could be a little bit lower, but I like how he's eliminating the separation. He's bringing his knees. He's bringing his knees. He's bringing his knees. Now, the defender tries to go and toss him, but he's done a really good job of staying on contact, and he finishes through the block. It could be better. Not bad. All right. Again, really good right here. I, I, scheme's important. You could have the best play called in the world, but if you can't block the guy lined up across from you, it's worthless. I really like what our center is doing right here on this shade. Coming off the ball, fitness pad, and he's running. All right, if you look at our left tackle right there, I think this is a good rep. Again, looking in that play side number, fitting his right pad. He's getting on the guy quickly. He's eliminating the gap. He's eliminating this gap right there. You know, to me, run blocking, how fast can you get on somebody? But I started talking about in terms of, you know, eliminating the gap. Close the gap. How fast can you eliminate this distance right here? Don't, don't give this guy time to make a quick inside move. Go ahead and go attack that guy. All right. Now we're playing on our terms. We're playing on our terms right there now. Throw the damn ball. All right, right tackle. Again, tight right, but he's a head up four. All right, so now you're on your aiming point right now. Keep a winner a winner. Really, you're almost turning that into drive block. I think his right elbow could be in. I think he kind of clamps it, but I like his backside elbow. And he's bringing his knees through contact, and he owns that block right there. Good job by him. Again, if you look at our right tackle in this picture, I think this is a really good tight example of tight right. Boom. Brings that left knee through the defender's crotch. Now accelerate to and through contact. Again, to me, football is all about how fast can we eliminate that gap right there. Don't give that guy a quick inside move. Go and attack it. Take it away from him. All right? Wide reach. This is drill number three. We got drive. We got tight. We got wide. So we work wide right, wide left every single day. Our aiming point becomes a play side armpit. We are foot to foot or wider. We're usually about a yard away. Or we're actually a little bit wider. I try to make it tougher on our guys. So right here, you can see we're probably about a good yard away from the bag holder right there. All right, your foot's on that hash. He's on that line. All right, my aiming point now. All right, in tight right, my aiming point was that play side number. That was my aiming point on tight right. Well, now wide right. We call it wide right. They know how to line up. They know their aiming point. But wide right, this just simulates our outside zone play, which we call slant. So now my aiming point becomes that play side armpit. And you know, as an offensive lineman, I tell them, go and sell out. Sell out, but go and get on there. Get on that aiming point because you know, all right, if we're running outside zone, you got all of your help inside. So you got to run off the ball and you got to go. Boom. Pad, elbow, knee, all in line on a string. Again, I'd like to see his eyes looking in. They kind of flinch their head on contact. You know, they don't have their face mask on them. But again, how fast can we get on a block and stay on a block? Again, you know, to me, if I, if I talk about first steps, you know, you're probably going to have to lose a little bit of ground in order to get to that play side armpit. All right? But all that first step should do is just be quick and efficient. Quick and efficient and allow your backside knee to get through. I think that's a pretty good job here, by. Everybody's going to be different, you know. Everybody's going to be different. As long as they can get on a block and stay on a block, I'm pretty happy with that. Like, again, right here, I'm not coaching that first step, but he loses a little bit of ground. But I think that's really good because it allows him to bring his backside knee through. If you were to gain ground... Now you're crossing over and you're not doing yourself any good. Now I would be coaching that up. 
But right there, I, I'm, I'm really stressing, more importantly, bringing your backside knee through. Wide right, set up, boom. Again, his hands are very secondary. They're there just to kind of guide it in. Boom. It, and it fits beautiful right there. It's like a puzzle. Right there, boom. His left pad, elbow, knee all in line on his string. Defender needs to be given a better look, kind of raises high. Not very good right there. Again, you always got to coach the defender as hard as you coach the offensive lineman. Give him a good look. But I really like what he's doing. All of his energy and momentum is going directly down through the middle. That's a really good rep here by Donnie. Now, what I will say, the wider this defender gets, the more that these guys feel like that they have to reach out and grab. All right? Don't reach. Don't grab for the block. Run and bring your knees. As soon as you start reaching and grabbing, you're going to fall behind on the block. Your feet stop. Really good right there. But again, you can see, guys, you know, I really like his backside knee on contact. Pretty good. Pretty good block. And again, sometimes I get involved in the drill so they, so they know what it feels like to get on the hip and push somebody through. And we can talk about a uh, slant. You know, if we were talk more in depth about the play, but this is just a drill tape. You know, I think he can be a little bit lower right there. There we go. Uh, I think he's a little short, actually. You know, it's not bad. I think he's a little bit short. He knows all this helps inside. He can go, go. But again, we do it over and over and over again. You know, I want to see that right knee stick it right now through the defender's crotch. He shouldn't be swinging that knee around, all right? I don't want to see that thing get over, over uh, in front of himself, you know? That knee shouldn't be out over here. It shouldn't be over here. It should be directly through the middle of the crotch like it is right there. Now all my energy and momentum is going down through the middle of the defender. The minute you start swinging that backside knee, now we start playing laterally. Soon as you get to that aiming point, let's get square and get vertical. Again, hands are very secondary. They're there just to kind of guide the block in. You know, I think right here, if you look at uh, Colin Lavelle over here, all right, I think he's starting to reach and grab, and I think he's short on the aiming point. You can see his helmet on the backside half. Where Donnie right there, boom, I mean, he's on it now. We do this over and over and over again. Again, I think we're a little short on there. There we go. That's not bad. I like I like this I like this right here. And you can see again, this first step is just making room for that backside knee. Really good, really good on contact. Centers. Let's see. Are we stepping and snapping? Snapping, then stepping. And again, you know, it's you got to coach that. The center's got to hear that every single day. They got to hear somebody say step and, or step and snap. They got to hear somebody say that every single day. Because again, I don't give them too much to focus on. It's three, four points, but it's going to be the same three, four points that they're going to hear for the next four or five years. You know, I'm not just going to come in one day and all of a sudden we're going to do something completely different on a sled, you know. And I don't talk about bringing your hips. All I do is talk about bringing your knees. Okay, so now, what you do on the practice field, it better show up on the game film. So right there, we're working wide right. This is our outside zone play. So now Donnie's sinking that play side armpit, all right? As soon as he gets that aiming point, he wants to start, start to work square and get vertical. So let's see it. Not bad. His elbows are in tight. He's running. He's trying to bring his knees. All right, he's trying to fight like crazy to eliminate space and separation. You can see right here, this is, this is a great illustration in trying to eliminate the gap. We're trying to eliminate separation as an offensive lineman, and the defensive lineman, what are they trying to do? They're trying to create separation, get rid of you. We want to eliminate separation. Not bad. I like what he's doing. He stays on the block. Now finish it, finish it. All right, really good here. I really like our right tackle here, getting off on the cadence, on the set, hut, boom. I mean, golly, that's really good. That's really good. And you know, we gotta get better. Our right guard is decent. Our center's a little bit slow and he's the one snapping the ball for golly. And right here, our left side's awful. You know, 
And just like everybody, we got to get better. But I really like what our right tackle is doing. He's eliminating the gap. Now, I think he could be a little bit more on his aiming point. But, man, this is a pretty good job. It's a pretty good job. Pretty good run play. It's a bigger play now. We got to really, and if you run outside zone, this receiver then should be on a push crack. He should be blocking safeties. And I don't care. At college level, high school level, it's all the same. The worst, blo the worst tacklers are the, are the fucking corners. You got to run off the corners. Not very good. You know, we'll talk more about outside zone if we, if I ever meet with you guys. But right here, this is awful. This is a big MA. This is a big time MA. He used to be push cracking for the safety. We cannot have this guy make the tackle. Golly. Not good. All right, if you look at our right tackle here, little slow up on the ball. But same thing, even on second level, I'm telling that right guard, your aiming points that play side armpit. You know, nothing changes on the second level block. Get on a block and stay on a block. All right, this is, I think, a good illustration here of our right guard. All right, he's aiming for that play side armpit. He wants to push your buddy through. Get on his hip and push him through. Really good here by this right guard. But everybody's thinking right here. We're running outside zone to the left, right? Slam play to the left. We're thinking about our play side armpit. This is just wide right, wide right, wide right, wide right, or wide left. It's all wide left for everybody. Getting guys cut down on the backside. Tight end's got to finish. I really like our right guard here. Again, using cadence to his advantage. His elbows are in tight and he's running. It's a great illustration of wide right. All right, now, down. All right, so we got drive, we got tight, we got wide. Our fourth drill we do every day is called down, and this is uh, this this starts to really help our gap scheme plays. And you know we we run quite a bit of counter here at North Dakota, so now we needed a drill to kind of teach that, and that's why I started doing more of what we call down right and down left. Our aiming points the V of the neck, and I'll explain that here in a second. And again, we're foot to foot alignment. Right, so right here, and it's hard to see, but our foot, our right foot is to his right foot, foot to foot alignment. And, I, and I'll get on the V of the neck here in a second because V of the neck is very, it's a very abstract, you know, it's not really definitive in my, at my opinion. So I really got to make sure I define what, it, what the V of the neck is. But again, his eyes go to the V of the neck. He wants to fit his left pad. Tuck his left elbow in tight, and his left knee is through the defender's crotch. That's just down blocks. We're working down right, down left. All right, so the V of the neck, the V of the neck is that right there. That's the V of the neck. That's my aiming point right there. And I think it's important to define that to the players because they don't, I didn't know what a V of the neck was in college, you know, and I think they got to know it too. Get everybody on the same page. Don't ever take for granted what somebody does and doesn't know. I think right here, I don't like this rep. I can see his right elbow. I want that thing in tucked and tight more like that. Make them do it again. If they do it wrong, make them do it again until they get better at it. There we go. That's a better clip right there. Fit his left pad underneath the defender's chin. Maybe it could be a little bit lower, but his elbows are in tight. All right, he's bringing that left knee through the defender's crotch and he's running. It's a really good rep here by him. Boom, there we go, better clip. Now he's pad under chin. 
right? Via the neck aiming point, he's running on the block. Sometimes now, all right, because I think the down block is a little bit of a different block. You know, I, I really think now, in a way, it's almost a finesse block. You know, you, you still want to fit your pad and your hands are very secondary, but sometimes I'll give these guys an option on defense to spin out over the top, all right, or to fight like crazy and get vertical because we got to rep that. Here it is, down right, better illustration. We should be foot-to-foot -foot alignment. I don't know why he gets so wide, but his, his aiming point should be that V of the neck right there. That's your aiming point. Again, all that first step is doing is just making room for that backside knee. And to me, I think his first step right there, this is not a good first step. I, I think it's hard now for him to bring that backside knee through. You know, I think he just pivots off of that. Now I got to coach that. Again, I think he's pivoting off that first step, and this is what he struggles with. I think, I think the first step over here, that's what it should look like. This right here is a poor first step. I like right there. That first step's good. Makes room for his backside knee. All right, this first step is, is a little bit poor, and he gets away with it because he's a pretty good athlete, but it's going to catch up to you. It's going to catch up to you. Really good here. I, I like this guy's first step. Makes room for that backside knee. This is a really good, really good rep over here. Really good rep. Again, his hands are very secondary. They're there just to kind of guide it in. I don't like how he winds up right there. I don't like how he winds up right there. You expose your chest. And again, some coaches do, some coaches don't coach. I, I, I don't like the wind up. Not bad. Pretty good rep. All right, let's get to some, okay, here. So now this is the one where they were spinning out. So they're working down left. My aiming point's the V of the neck, all right? My first step, just make room for the backside knee, all right? Now, get your head out and finish the block. If they go to spin, finish the block, just like our center over here does in this picture right there. Get your head out and finish the block. Not bad. All right, so, you know, I don't know what play we're running, all right? But I know this is going to be like down left. So right there, if you watch our right tackle to him, all we're working is down left. All right. Your eyes should go to the V of the neck. You want to fit your right pad and bring your right knee through the defender's crotch. It's just down right. That's just down left. I'm sorry, down left. You know, and again, now what do you got to be ready for late for him to spin out? You know, and I don't like the finish at the end, but I like it initially. He gets movement on the guy. All right, same thing right here, you know. We're working uh, we're working down right now. So our right guard right here, he's looking in the V of the neck. He wants to fit his left pad. All right, his left pad, his left elbow is out wide, and he loses on the block. You know, it's not good. I like, our, I like our left tackle. I think he does a decent job getting that guy ejected out of there. All right. So now we're going down left. Our center's looking in the V of the neck. He wants to fit his right pad and run. I think he kind of braces instead of stepping. I don't like that. He's kind of bracing off of it instead of stepping. Here's a better picture of down left right here. There we go. There we go with that backside elbow. That's a better job. Looking in the V of the neck. Again, what you do on film, what you do on the practice field, the better show up on film. Right there, you know, same thing even with the tackle. His aiming points to the V of the neck. He wants to fit his right pad. Now, I don't like how the tackle right there kind of lunges out and leans at him. You know, he, he goes for the knockout blow. Just trust it. Bring your knees and trust it. And he gets the job done. It could be a whole lot better. But I like what our right guard is doing here in this picture. Same thing here with our, our left tackle. Good effort. Good effort on the finish. 
You know, his left hand is initially high and wide, but you know, I mean, never, never underestimate the value of effort and toughness. You can get a lot accomplished with effort and toughness. You know, his technique's not the best, but his effort and toughness and finishing the block is, is great. He just wasn't gonna get beat. He wasn't gonna get beat, and I can take that. That's, I, that's something you don't coach. You look at our right guard in this picture, that's a really good job here by him. And again, I think all good blocks, they kind of happen naturally. It's not something you have, it's not something you, you overcoach or you coach too much. All good blocks just kind of happen naturally. I think that's a really good rep here by, I think that's a really good rep here by this right guard. It's a really good rep. It's pads under his chin, now his right elbow gets a little high late. Uh, but that's a really good, really good block here by this right guard. Uh, he's not in that aiming point. He's getting that guy moved. I can take that. All right, blade. All right, so we got down, we got drive, we got tight. Drive, tight, wide, and down. Those are our four drills that we do. Our fifth drill we call is blade drill. This is our basic double team drill. Each blocker takes half the man. All right, fitted position when we have no pads and a three-point stance when we have pads. Now, there are times when we do, uh, uh, you know, a guard tackle combo drill when we'll work combinations, right? But if I want to work just a double team drill, and this is how I teach it, all right? I get into, you know, again, coaching the technique and fundamentals. You're either a coach that coaches scheme or you're a coach that coaches technique and fundamentals. And that's what I want to try to coach here at North Dakota's technique and fundamentals, all right? But if I start out and I get a freshman in for the first time in our program, I'm not talking to them about a combo, a combo drill, right? I'm not going to line up a three technique and a backside linebacker and say, hey, let's go ahead and let's deuce it to the backside linebacker because they'll look at me like I have two, uh, like I have 50 eyes, all right? So the first thing I make them do is what we call a blade drill, all right? And then, again, I don't care what the play call is. All I'm trying to do is coach a double team, what a double team should feel like, regardless of the play. So right here, you can see we're not in pads. So right here, if we're not in pads, we're gonna start in this fitted position right there, which we are. So I really like right here, pad under chin, pad under chin, elbows in tight. They are hip to hip, all right? I should be able to put a $100 bill right there on their hip and that whole thing during the entire time that, that bill should be connected. All right, I wanna close the seam. I don't want any, I don't want any, you know, close the zipper. I don't wanna see any space in between your hip. All right, you can see right here, all right, their outside foot is up, inside foot is back, and on my set hut, they're gonna bring that inside foot directly vertical through the defender's crotch. I don't want them swinging it that way. I don't want them swinging it that way. I don't want them going inside. I want it directly up the field, up the field and vertical. And they're just gonna relax and run with that outside half. Just relax and run with that outside half. I don't want them to be tight. I don't want them to be closed fist. Just relax and run. So set, hut, boom. Again, I put this on here because you can start to see them, they're swinging that knee around. It's not, it doesn't look like it's quick and fluid, right? You can see, all right, right here, this guy, he starts to swing that backside knee around. Now his feet, he's crossed over, right? That's not a good rep. And again, I put the good on with the bad. But again, now I got tight ends in on this drill. And again, in order to get good at something, you gotta do it over and over and over and over again. All right, so now, again, starting that fitted position, all that inside hand is there to do is just to guide you. I don't grab it. I don't grab on with that inside hand. I don't wanna grab on because when I grab on, all right, now my feet stop. I want my pad to do the work. I want my pad to do the blocking. So I tell those guys, I don't want you guys to grab on. Right there, we're kinda grabbing on. All right, you know, we only get so much time working this drill without pads on, you know, 
just by the nature of the monster that we created, we're not very good when we don't have pads on at this drill. All right, we're a little bit better here when we got pads on because now we're in a three-point stance. All right, defenders in a four-point stance, but we again, we want to step at it with our inside feet. Step at it with our inside feet. All right, we should be hip tip and we should be tighter. A little bit better now we're getting a little bit better I think right here the right guard swinging that knee around or this number 74 is starting to swing that knee around again a little bit better not bad I would still rather see us just hip to hip and just relax and run with your outside half just relax and run with your outside half Not bad. All right, so what you do on practice field, the better show up on the game. So right here, if we look at this, you know, I don't care what the play is. They're working a scoop block on the backside of zone. But, you know, regardless, we're just working a blade drill. We call that blade. Get hip to hip, hip to hip. Not bad. Tight end's got to do a better job right here. Understand, too, we can talk more about uh, scheme here. But we, we want to stay on that double team as long as we can. The tempo of the linebacker, all right, this guy right here, linebackers control the tempo of our double teams. I think our tight end, he got too involved. That's why I, that's why I don't like those guys getting their right hand and left hand involved. Because that's an awful job now. Now we get beat. I mean, there's a fine line. That's why I love coaching this position. It's so hard to get all six, seven guys on the same page. It is so hard. Poor job, though, by him. All right, you look at our center and left guard. Hip to hip, not bad. You look at our right guard, right tackle, hip to hip, not bad. Again, I, I put this angle on here too, because now if you look at our right guard, right tackle, I want to see them getting vertical movement, All right? It's not bad here by those guys. They're getting this guy moved, you know, we start, we snap the ball on the 30 yard line. You know, we, we end up somewhere on the 34, Decent movement, not the greatest. I mean, I'd like to see a little bit more. I mean, challenge those guys. But again, we're hip to hip. All that is is just blade drill. Not bad. All right, again, look at our right guard, right tackle right there on a three technique. Not terrible. Throw the damn ball. I, I now I think his knee is slightly underneath himself. And I don't think his first step is helping him. You know. All right, challenge drill. So we got drive, we got tight, wide, down, and blade. Our five drills. Our next drill we call is challenge drill. So all this is is a one-on-one -on -one competition drill, head up alignment, set to the block, all right, set to the block, work to fit your pads, and bring your knees. Gain as much ground as you can. And I, I, I really thought this was interesting. I got this from a video I was watching of Joe Moore a while ago, and he would say, you know, I don't have a six-inch step for those guys. I don't coach them one way or the other. I want them to gain as much ground as they can with that first step. Right? I really think this shows up in this drill right here because this drill right here, this is a tougher drill now. You know? Head up, alignment. Right? They should be nose to nose. They got to give themselves some room to step. Right? So there should be a little bit more room right here. But if I'm this right, play, right tackle, my first step's with that right knee. Right? My first step's with that right knee. I think this is a toughness drill, and I like doing this drill because now it forces them. You can see them, and I do this drill probably more now than I've ever been doing this drill before because this shows you, you know, the guys that 
the guys that create bad habits, the guys that wind up, the guys that play high, the guys that don't take a step. You know, right here you can see, again, gain as much ground as you can with that right knee. You know, now his, left, his right elbow, he gets exposed though because his right elbow is out wide. And Donnie right there, even though that he don't step, he has better pad level and his elbows are in tight and he's running. All right. So again, I do this drill a lot. I love this drill. But again, gain as much ground as you can. Right there. I don't have a six inch step or whatever, but I really believe the guy who wins this drill is the guy who plays with great pad level, plays with great leverage in general, and then the guy who gains as much ground as he can. You can see this guy, he has no step. He's just leaning on the block and he catches it. See how he's, he, just, he just lunges and leans. Now he got better at it and he got better real fast because I think this drill forced him to step. He got better because this guy forced him, this drill forces this guy to step. I really think this drill has a lot of value. That's some pretty good snap here. You, you find out real fast the guys that play with bad pad level, the guys that don't want to step. All right, right here, really good, really good pad level here by Donnie. And he's getting the guy moved. You know, and I think this drill it has some competitive. And again, you know, we want to compete in everything we do here at North Dakota. And you'll find out real fast the winner and the loser in this drill. And guys don't like losing. Guys don't like getting embarrassed. You know, right there. I mean, that's not, this guy don't feel good about himself after that drill. You know, but he's going to try like heck. And he got better. He got better real fast because he doesn't want to get embarrassed like that. You know, so I think there's a little bit of competitiveness involved in this drill. And I really like it. Same thing right here. You can see him no step. Now, he does a good job here with his pad under his chin and his elbows in tight, but no step. Again, I, I do this drill a lot. I really believe in this drill. I think it has a lot of value. Again, gain as much ground as you can. And you don't know what to, I don't mind if they have a little bit of forward lean on their hand. Know the situation, right? You have some common sense approach to it, you know? I think there's a lot of value in a short yardage goal line situation for this drill. Right here, this is not bad. Pat under his chin, trying to bring that left knee, trying to bring your knees and run on it now. Don't lean on it, don't lean on it late. Not bad, but you find out real fast how, how much guys play with good pad level. 